In this video, I'm going to be going over my symbol dungeons add-on for Godot, which lets you generate these procedurally generated 3D dungeons for your games. I got sent two games that people are creating using this add-on, and I also added a bunch of new features recently, which I'm going to go over here. If you're interested in this add-on, I'm going to have a bunch of links down below in the description for you to check out, including a web demo, which you're seeing here. This is just a demo you can try in your browser to generate these dungeons. I also have a more comprehensive tutorial if you want to learn how to use it, and I'll link all that down below. So first off, I want to show off the really cool two games that I got sent. The first one here is Grimhaven. This is a multiplayer kind of lethal company inspired game. And uh, from what I understand, it kind of has some mechanics similar to Amnesia Dark Descent. So two of my favorite games right there, already like super interested and excited for this game to come out. The premise of it is that it is six player multiplayer and you're going to be exploring these mansions and trying to escape and survive in them with your friends. And yeah, so it's a haunted mansion. There's going to be monsters stalking you. And as the player's sanity levels decrease and get lower and lower and lower, the monsters will get more and more scary and brutal. And if the player's sanity levels get too low, then one player can be chosen to haunt the other players. I'm really happy to see someone's doing this kind of style of game with it. Uh, this was what I initially envisioned when I created the add-on. I was playing a ton of Lethal Company at the time, and I just really wanted to create something similar to that. So I'm happy to see someone creating a game like this. So this is Grim Haven by Fridge Games. Definitely check this out. Link in the description. And the next one is called The Rift of Nostaria. This one has a really cool vibe. I really like the demo that I got sent for this one. Um, it is a dark fantasy life simulator. And it has a twist, like basically... Instead of the normal RPG tone where you're this like hero trying to save the world, it's more you're just a normal person in this world just trying to survive. It's been really cool to see what people are creating with my add-on and I didn't expect to get this much like interest in it and people actually making games with it, so I'm really happy to see that. So yeah, super excited to play both of these games when they come out. The links for the YouTube and Twitter for both of these games and active development will be in the description, so definitely check that out if you're interested. And yeah, that's the two games, really cool. And now um, I wanna show like all the new stuff I added uh, to make this add-on better um, and more usable for people to create games like that. So this first one is just showing the multiplayer example. So I try to make it as easy as possible to use this to create multiplayer games. So I'm just running two game clients side by side, um, connecting to my local host machine, hosting the server on there. And yeah, as long as the seed when you generate is the same, uh, both players are going to get the same exact dungeon generation and uh, you can go and explore that in multiplayer. Um, and the second one is showing a uh, another example. This one is for pre-placed rooms. So use case for that is to have rooms that you can connect to the outside world. So in this case we have a mansion and I'm using a pre-placed room so I manually place like the front door entrance room. And then the dungeon just generates around that. So that allows me to place like the entrance room of a mansion or a house or whatever you want or like a cave entrance. And then you can kind of generate the dungeon in your game world um, and have like a easy entrance to it um, instead of like just teleporting them. So you could do either one, but both worked. I thought that was a pretty good add and that I got a couple requests for that. And I think it's a pretty useful feature. And yeah, so another quick example of that same scene I just showed you in the multiplayer one. Um, here I set up like a little walkway. So you have the dungeon grid itself. And then I placed an entrance room which connects out to the rest of the level. Um, and then you can have like an easy way to enter into the dungeon um, aside from just teleporting players in or spawning them into the dungeon. So I think this is a pretty useful, cool feature. Next up, here's a, another feature. I got a bunch of requests for and this is custom room placement. So this allows you to supply a custom function that allows you to choose the exact position and rotation of all the rooms in your dungeon. So in this case, I'm putting uh, blue rooms on the left side and red rooms on the right side of my dungeon. And this was a request I got, like how could, how could we do like biomes, like rooms of certain types spawning in certain places and others spawning in others. So this is, was, a, I think, a flexible way to do it. Uh, you basically just supply in a function and then you just choose the positions of the rooms yourself. And finally, the last feature I'm gonna show here that I recently added was random room rotation. So before, when rooms spawned in, they were just randomly positioned, but now they'll also be randomly 
rotated in increments of 90 on the dungeon's voxel grid. So as you can see here, two of the same rooms and uh, they are randomly gonna be rotated when they're spawned in. So that's pretty much all the core new stuff I added. Now I'm gonna give an overview of how the add-on actually works again. So the basic premise is you just spawn a bunch of rooms in and then push them apart so they're not overlapping and then finally connect them with a pathfinding algorithm. I use A star. I think it's pretty clear in this top-down view of what's happening. You just spawn a bunch of rooms in and then push them apart until they're separated. Uh, but here is also the JavaScript prototype that I initially created. So as you can see, each room is a box. Spawn a bunch of them and uh, you push them apart when they're red there. That means they're overlapping. And I just repeatedly push them apart until they're all separated. If it fails to fully separate or connect all the rooms, you just restart the uh, generation algorithm. And it might take like a couple tries. Sometimes it, it can fail, but after like the second or third try, it should work. And I also made a prototype of the 3D version of the algorithm. And it's actually not too complicated to go from 2D dungeon generation to 3D. The main addition here is just adding a phase of connecting the different floors with stairs. Otherwise, you can basically just treat it as the same problem as the 2D dungeon generation. And yeah, you can basically just treat each floor of the 3D dungeon as a um, 2D dungeon. Um, given that you know all of the floors are connected by stairs, it's just the same problem as a 2D dungeon once you uh, know they are connected. And yeah, there are a bunch of tutorials for like doing 2D dungeons that show how to use the pathfinding algorithms and all that. So I guess the interesting part here is just like how to ensure all the floors are connected. And basically for that, I'm using what's called a union find algorithm. And you can look up exactly like the data structures for that and how they look in various programming languages. But the essential concept is you keep different buckets and um, when two nodes or in this case floors are connected, you place them into the same bucket. And um, it's basically just an efficient way of keeping track of which floors or nodes are connected in your dungeon graph. So in this example I'm showing here, um, some of the rooms or the floors may already be connected. So two floors are connected if there's a room which has multiple doors spanning multiple floors. So those rooms with multiple doors spanning multiple floors can actually connect multiple floors together. So my numbers here aren't 100% accurate, but you can see there are some multi-floor stair rooms there, um, and those would uh, basically mean those top floors or that cluster of floors at the top there is connected. And so we would place them all in the same union find bucket. We would mark them all as connected. And then you can see kind of the same idea with these two other clusters, one in the middle and one at the bottom here. And so you're gonna be able to determine a lot of floors are either already directly or indirectly connected, like A is connected to B and B is connected to C. So A and C are indirectly connected. And so in a lot of dungeons, even just starting out, a lot of the floors are already gonna be connected. So the uh, challenge is then to connect all of the remaining unconnected floors. And the simple case for that there, like if you have a stair room of two high, one door on the first floor, one door on the second, um, then you can just use that to directly connect together unconnected floors. So here like nine and 10, you could add a stair room, connect those two together. And then because nine and 10 were connected, that means uh, nine, 10 and 11 and 12 are all connected because 10, 11, 12 are already in their own connected cluster. And so yeah, in this way, you basically go up the whole list of floors with rooms present on them or with rooms that have doors leading to them. And you make sure all of the floors are either directly connected by stairs or in some way indirectly connected so that all the floors of the dungeon are reachable. And one part I did kind of gloss over there that makes it a little bit more complicated is there can be a case like this right here where two rooms, like you can't directly connect their floors together with stairs. There's like, like if the stair only connects one floor up, if you have a gap of two, um, you have to find like a chain of stairs that connects both of those two floors. And it's not particularly elegant, but I just came up with this um, heuristic algorithm function thing to do that. Um, like when there are two unconnected floors and there are no floors directly able to be connected, it just uses this function to find some composition of stair rooms to use to connect multiple floors up if you can't directly connect them, if you need to like combine multiple stair rooms to make a connection. So that's what I use for that. 
And so yeah, one more notable thing to add that I added to the add-on was a lot better like debug info and in editor information that you can see while you are creating the dungeon rooms. So I added a lot of notifiers like this so like you can see where the doors are on your rooms. And I mentioned before like everything's on this voxel grid. You can actually easily see the uh, like voxel size of your rooms. I added a lot better debug info for that. So like um, you can see if I increase the size in voxels here. Um, this is the living room room. It uh, like increases, gets wider. And uh, like it'll tell you if there's an error. Like I have these dungeon room doors. And obviously you can only have doors on the outside of it. So when it calculates like the door positions, make sure they're valid. And if not, it'll give you an error. And same with like the actual dungeon generator grid, like uh, it'll show clearly this kind of 3D voxel grid, which the add-on is going to use to generate the dungeon on and place the rooms. And then like for pre-placing them too, um, there is some more clear representation. You can see the doors and everything and you can see how it fits in. And um, like if you're to move them around, you can pre-place them on the grid and then just click uh, force align with grid and then it will make sure your dungeon room is aligned with the uh, 3d grid in the editor so in this way you have this voxel grid that you can kind of easily see and position in your levels with a lot of debug info and then um, like for example if there's some error add a lot of uh, debug info for errors at the top of it like here you can see here it's saying that there are no rooms added and it will kind of guide you through the different process of using the add-on. So hopefully a lot of the debug info is helpful to add it in there. And that's one of the most notable things I added um, last. And so yeah, that is the video. I hope you enjoyed and I hope this will uh, help make the add-on a bit more well known. Maybe some more people will uh, make use of it for their games and uh, have some fun with it. I think uh, it's only fun for me making it and uh, playing around with these different generations. You can get pretty creative with them and start making some pretty cool stuff. To learn more about it, definitely go check all the links below in the description. I'm going to link like the GitHub. I also did a more comprehensive, longer tutorial on it, which I even went over like a description of some of how the source code works if you're interested in that. And then, of course, you can um, always ask any questions down below. And I'll do my best to answer them. If you want to try this demo that you're seeing on the screen right now where you can generate these dungeons and then spawn the player into them to run through them, uh, I've actually created a web demo version of this that you can play in your browser. probably only works on desktop, but definitely go check that out if you want to try it. And then, uh, yeah, all the other links as well as this demo will be down in the description below. And one thing I will also plug while I have time I recently started uh, a Patreon, so if you're interested in supporting the development of more free add-ons and content or just to support the channel, definitely check that out. Um, anything helps if you want to do a monthly pledge or if you just want to do a one-off donation, I also have a coffee, Ko-Fi, K-O-F-I, however you pronounce that. Um, I have an account on that website which allows for one-time donations if you want to donate over there. I got a few people donating already. Um, and really appreciate that. And so, yeah, thank you for all the support. Um, I've gotten a really uh, good positive feedback on this add on in this channel. Uh, I actually just started this channel. I made a tutorial on how to do stairs as like a one off video, and I wasn't really expecting anything from it. And uh, yeah, now that video has like 12,000 views, so pretty cool to see uh, how everyone's interested in what I'm creating here. I'm planning to release a lot more videos going forward. I I have some plans for different types of content. I have the tutorial ones. I might do some more of those. I also want to try kind of more videos, kind of like Sebastian Log does, where it's like um, kind of more videos that are a bit more like entertaining to watch because I, I feel like those do better a lot of times in terms of the views. Um, like one of the reasons why I made this video right now is because um, I did like a tutorial, but I'm curious how this one's going to do because often... Um, yeah, these like videos with like music and like it's a more general overview where you show like some more cool pictures and stuff. They do better than like the tutorials it seems like I found a lot of times. Um, or at least that's the pattern I'm seeing so far, like the most viewed video. 
uh, as the time I'm speaking is 31k views and it's like the other procedural dungeons video and it's kind of like a broad overview it still goes into some technical stuff like I did in this video but yeah I'm just experimenting with kind of different video types uh yeah if you have any ideas maybe leave them in the comments um I'm curious to see uh you know what people think of the different kinds of videos um definitely going to be testing multiple different types and just see what works but yeah the next ones I'm planning to release are kind of probably more like general overview videos like this like building some um, add-on or just like building a part of a game and then kind of doing a tactical overview on it and kind of giving a cool explanation with like visuals and whatnot trying to be like kind of entertaining I feel like people like those a lot I've gotten I got really good reception on the prior one um, and then I also might do some tutorials in the future as well I'm just gonna try to you know experiment with different things and see what works best um, but yeah I'm planning a lot more videos so definitely stay tuned and uh, Rate, comment, subscribe, and thank you for watching, and I hope you enjoyed the video.